Ava Tuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, we are so blessed by God for an opportunity to hear His Word and allow His thought pass flow through us and, and bless you. We, we, we are so excited about that. And my prayer is that the same way the Word of God is coming through us, it's coming exactly the same way into you by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is using these words to build your life day in, day out, and hand over your inheritance to you. Praise God. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that day? Say this with me with faith in your heart. Say, Father, I make a demand today for my daily bread. I believe you that you meet my needs because I'm your child. So today, I receive everything from you to meet every need that will show up today. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, daily bread doesn't just mean money or food. Daily bread means favor. It means the ability to walk in righteousness. See, it just means that today, man, my life is going to be led by the Spirit of God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we've been talking about His peace. You see, honey, you know, when, when God said to Joshua, you shall meditate on it day and night. Now, if you notice, because from the beginning of the month, the Lord says it's a month of peace. Now, I've been sharing things. I've been sharing why His peace, how His peace came to us. I've been sharing all those things with you. Hey, guess what? Now, those are part of my meditations. See? They are part of my meditation. Now, let me tell you something about meditating on God's Word. Why it's important that you do it. Meditating on God's Word, it's part of the ways to develop your mind. I'll repeat that again. Meditating on God's Word is part of the ways to develop your mind. Now, your mind needs constant development. Now, sometimes people tell you, Reading will develop your mind. Yes, that's the truth. Now, you see, if you read but you don't meditate, how will your mind be developed? Because the reading exposes you to a lot of things. You know, you, you can be over in your country or in your little village and you read about other nations, read about their, their is it, is it books that are written from other areas. They write according to their cultures. They write according to how they live their lives. So you can sit in your village and really tell how someone in, in West Indies is, is, is living, or how a culture is over there by reading. So what's that? You've opened your mind to those informations. But now here's the point. When God speaks to you, I come in a case in the I'm not just talking about God saying, son, get up, pray. That's not what I'm talking about. See, John said in John chapter 15, Jesus, he quoted Jesus to say, you are clean through the words that I have spoken unto you. And Amplified Version makes it clear. It says, the teachings that I discuss with you. John chapter 15 and verse 3. It says, the teachings that I discuss with you. So when the Lord speaks to you and tells you it's a month of peace, what is your job? Your job is to begin to meditate on that word that he has given to you. As you meditate, you set your heart to meditate on it. Guess what happens? He begins to open up what peace is to you. He begins to open up how he will give you peace. He begins to open up how, you know, because you are now opening your heart to his teachings. So you know what's going on? He's writing books in your heart. Praise God. So you, you're just there meditating and then you take your Bible. Now meditation is not sitting down in one place and close your eyes and say, mm, 
no 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 meditation simply means playing in your mind words and words and words and opening other angles and sometimes many times not sometimes reading helps your meditation so what do you read in this case you take the bible and thank god today we have electronic version those days we used to have uh, one big concordance that we carry <laughs> praise god every word in the bible you want to look for you can find it there but today just with your phone you can search any word in any part of the scripture it's going to come to you now you begin to put those words together you begin to look at those scriptures one after the other and then the spirit of god guiding you and that's the most important angle to it if the spirit of god is not guiding you you may lead yourself to error oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why i tell people it's not enough to carry the bible and just begin to search people have such i hear some people talk sometimes and i just know that this guy is just um searching scriptures like a professor you know an academician not a child of God who's looking for his inheritance. <laughs> oh yeah, you see, because because people. That's why we hear some arguments. People argue from scriptures. You look at them and said, ah, you know, the first thing I always ask myself, what were they looking for? Indeed, are you are you looking for how to argue from scriptures, or are you looking for how to search for your inheritance? See that that that's a big difference. For example, is are you trying to prove that uh, divine health is not really, really uh, a thing promised by God? Is that what you're trying to prove? Or are you trying to prove that if God said divine health is mine, I, I want to see to what extent I can really enjoy my divine health. Now, you see, you can search out anything from scriptures and bring any kind of argument you want to argue. But what's the end point of your argument? Sometimes when you hear people argue about, for example, they argue about tithing, you know, they argue about whether we should be um, baptized or not. People argue about now. The question you need to ask yourself first and foremost, to what end is this argument? Now, if you're able to prove to somebody that, oh, you're not supposed to tithe again, tithing is in, in the Old Testament, and you're able to prove that, which, which I think that is really silly because... I have done all those study and ended up with one fact that we don't even tight enough today. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. But you see, if your argument is just to prove that you're not supposed to tie, you will leave out the places that are most important. You're going to leave that out. You see, because you are trying to prove something you're already biased in your mind. Now, I've done several teachings on Titan. I think you need to search them out and go on our YouTube channel. Look for the scroll. We have lots of messages. Scroll to look at the time I did a series on Titan. Go listen to each one of them. I'm telling you, it will help you. I, I, I mean that. I said that purposely. It will help you. Now, it will help you first. Then, when you open your heart, it will bless you. But first and foremost, it will help you. Praise God. So, now, you, you, you begin to meditate. And at the end of every meditation, you must take a decision. The end of every meditation must be a decision. Don't forget that. If your meditation doesn't end with a decision, the word of God will be unfruitful to you. Satan is going to steal that word from your heart. Now, God says, it's a month of peace for us. Okay, thank you, Lord. Now, some of the things I'm teaching you now are things the Holy Spirit began to open my eyes to even now. You understand what I'm saying? As I began to meditate on it, and I began to think about this, okay? What well, extent? Now, now, for example, I shared something with you yesterday. I didn't see that for, until a, a few days ago. See? When, when the Lord opened my eyes, when Jesus said, my peace I give to you. Now, this is, this is how the Holy Spirit helps us. Now, I've read that scripture many years. I've preached that scripture for many years. Praise God. My peace, I leave you. Oh, Jesus is going to give you peace. But a few days ago, I was just meditating on it. And, and the Lord asked me, he said, He said, my peace. Now, I don't know how the Holy Spirit deals with you. 
But I'm teaching you how he deals with me. Or I'm just telling you how he deals with me. When he, and I, I know when he repeats something, I know. Because I do that to my children. So when they are speaking and they say something wrong, I'll just repeat what they said. And the moment I repeat what they said, they will realize that, uh, for daddy to say this, okay, let me examine it again. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, see? Now, it's the same way the Holy Spirit works with me. So I may, I may be meditating on something and say, my peace I give to you. And then he now says, my peace. Okay. My peace. Yeah. No, okay, well, hold on. Okay, Lord. What are you trying to tell me? Praise <laughs> God. And then he begins to, and then he showed me, he said, listen, I literally gave you my peace. <sighs> now that's why sometimes we share God's word and then you see somebody becomes restless. He can't sleep again. Why can't he sleep again? He said, no, 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 no. I, I'm like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. Like, ah, no, no, no. We must get to the end of this matter. What? You mean this thing has been written here since and I'm just finding out about it? Praise God. No, no, no. I'm telling you, I can be on that thing for weeks until I come up with a decision and I say, you know what? So when we say things like, I will never be broke again in my life, it's not because somebody said it. When we come up with things like, look, sickness is completely far and out of my body. It's not because somebody said we should declare. It's because of the results of meditating on God's word. And then you, you, you are just seeing how true this is. You know, for example, I can literally tell you nothing can ever take my peace. Nothing. Nothing is qualified to take my peace. Nothing is strong enough to take my peace. Nothing. And I mean nothing. You know why? Because I just found out that Jesus gave me his peace. I, you, you, you still don't get it. <laughs> he, I gamun de zaba. You know, and Isaiah told us, Isaiah 53 verse 5. His, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Oh boy, that, that thing blew. I mean, it just exploded my thoughts like, whoa! So when Jesus said, I'm giving you my peace. It meant his peace was taken away from him and handed over to me. Ah. <laughs> Holy give me shahi. It's just like I said, I'm giving you my car. You see that now? I'm giving you my car. So what does that mean? Uh, it means I'm going to stop using my car and you are going to start enjoying all the benefits of using that car. And while you are enjoying all the benefits of using that car, I will be deprived of the benefit of enjoying that particular car. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. And that's how Jesus meant it when he says, I give you my peace. Uh, if you know this, you, you, you don't need another day of trouble in your life. You don't need it. You don't need it. And, and listen, you've got to stand firm in faith and say, you know what? I refuse to be troubled in... Huh? Why should I be troubled? Oh, no, no, no. Satan has cheated me so badly. Ah, like him. My ignorance has been too terrible. I'm telling what I said to the Lord most of the time. My, well, I've been so ignorant. Lord. Ooh, how many years have I known the Lord? He, and I'm just getting to find this out. Well, you know what? He, said, he leads you precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. See? Now, if he had told me this maybe 10 years ago, I may not have understood it. And actually, I believe he began to tell me this 10 years ago. <laughs> Praise God. Or maybe even 20 years ago. Praise God. I believe so. You know why? Because he, he brings it precept upon precept. Just like you go to school. You go to elementary school. What they are going to be teaching in elementary school is the same thing that they are going to be teaching in the university. Oh yeah, that's the truth. But you see, they start from elementary school and they begin to put a precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. 
So now you get to the university. Nobody is going to tell you find the prime factor or LCM in, in the university. Nobody is going to ask you all those questions. But then they are going to ask you questions that you will need the LCM idea to solve. So you see, they began to teach you stuff in the university right from your primary school. <laughs> now, now that's how the Holy Spirit takes us. Precepts upon precepts. So just be cool with him. And he he and, and that's why your walk with the Lord should be a deliberate walk. Where are you heading to with the Lord? I can easily tell you where I'm headed for. I want to be exactly like him. I want to think like him. I want to talk like him. I want to walk like him. That's my goal. My goal is not to have all the money in the world. But hey, if I'm like him, I'll have all the money in the world. <laughs> oh yeah, that's it. Because he says, all things are mine. <laughs> see that now? But you see, my goal is not in the chasing of things. My goal is to be in him. Now, when I'm like him, I can command someone go to the river, get the first fish, the, the, the open the mouth, you see coin, and he's easy to buy a car for me. <laughs> you see that? Now, that's how it works. Work on being. Because with what you are, you will have. My time is up, but these are important things I've shared with you today. I pray that the Spirit of God will help you open your understanding to this truth. You don't need any other life. Staying in God's word is strong enough to put you through anything that you will face in life. And I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Spirit of God will garrison your heart in His truth and make His word expand and explode inside of you until you see nothing else but Him in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.